All right, everyone. This is Sunday morning again. This is number 16. My name is mm -hmm. Kenneth Price, and I've given myself the title, The Psychiatric Shaman. I've made up a dream character, folks. A dream character is psychiatric shaman, and he has a specific role. <laughs> he comes back into the quote unquote, you know, I put my little air quotes there, the medically injured community to, mm -hmm. to rewrite the narratives um, surrounding damage. Um, I host a Zoom call every Sunday morning, and this is uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time. This is number 16. And we all assemble here, and we, we unwind ourselves from the mental illness stories. We unwind ourselves from the hypothesis of mental illness. And many of the people who come into these rooms have, actually most of them, have fallen into the, the psychiatric spider web of pharmaceuticals. I fell into the psychiatric spider web of pharmaceuticals for 25 years and extrapolating myself from that parable took a lot of work because mm -hmm. I had to withdraw off of uh, countless psych meds, including benzodiazepines. And it changed my life forever, changed my life for the better, but it was a, it was a huge game changer. So, you know, out of all that, you know, out of the, the shit came the fertilizer, which has germinated this entire ministry. So, uh, these spiels that I give every uh, 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 Sunday morning are about five to ten minutes. Great, Craig, can you mute yourself? We're getting some background noise there. Or just be silent. So what we do is, is we, we come here on a, a Sunday morning, and the direction has always been guided. It's, it's got to be a ministry because my emergence from my psychiatric parable uh, required God. Had to. Uh, I, 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 I can't emphasize that enough. I'm not for everyone. This ministry is not for everyone. This ministry is for people who uh, have to have gone in the direction of, of faith. We're not religious here. We're not, we're not talking about any theology here. However, we have been going in the direction of the Course in Miracles. And the metaphysics of the Course in Miracles is how I emerged it's 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 the, the 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 primary way I emerged out of my psychiatric parable. So this is what I have to offer. Now, uh, we're going to get people of all different uh, uh, at all different places in life here on a Sunday morning. I invite everyone here on a Sunday morning. But that being said, we've we've got some people who are already off their meds, uh, have been off for a long time. Some people who are still considering going off their meds. Some people who are in their withdrawals, which can be very frightening. Um, we're, we're not here to, to do any helping or fixing. Uh, I don't think I can help and I don't think I can fix. Uh, I've stated in all my videos that my role here is to provide a lighthouse with experience, strength and hope, uh, resources and tools. So it's kind of a, a treatment center approach. Um, what we're doing here is working. So if you are in one of these you know, very painful places, I invite you to listen, okay? What I'm also going to do is I'm going to ask uh, people who, who aren't um, uh, on the call, you know, talking right now, if there's any background noise, please mute yourself. Uh, we, we sometimes have to stop the call and ask people to mute yourself. So I'm going to ask you, you know, to, to take that on your own. Um, if you want to uh, uh, participate, you know, you can either raise your hand this way or press a raise your hand button. Uh, the last thing. Uh, I'm. Uh, this is just a ministry, folks. Uh, I, I don't have credentials. I don't have psychological. I don't have shamanic. I, I, I don't have any medical credentials. Uh, I can't, and I, it would be irresponsible of me to tell anybody what to do. As a matter of fact, I won't. I can't. Um, so please, if, if you're looking for advice, uh, we have none to offer. Uh, I've got to put that point home. It's kind of a harm reduction uh, uh, disclaimer. Um, so, uh, I'm going to leave um, for the YouTube audience. I'm going to leave a link to my Facebook account down below in the description because it's outreach. Uh, and if, if what you hear rings true, uh, I've got a, a YouTube channel with about 60 videos so far. If what you're hearing rings true, I want to get connected. I say that because uh, emergence is not all allopathic. You know, this is this is a, a narrative which I've come to to unwind that the belief that all of this has to do with brain chemistry. No. <laughs> you know that's the chicken and the egg you know we believe that the brain chemistry you know we're just good to get recalibrated then we will get recalibrated no <laughs> we recalibrate 
and, and the brain chemistry follows. This is, this is the cause and effect that uh, uh, is actually very new age. Um, it was an absolute truth in my story. Listen, I was 25 years on psych meds and benzodiazepines, countless, okay? You gotta hear my testimony first. I had a mental illness, I had trauma. I, 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 I have put this all in my videos. Uh, coming off the meds was the hardest decision and the most important and the most valuable of my life. Because, uh, uh, well, and because of, of that decision, I must come back and support others who are making this decision. I basically got the archetype of a wounded healer. Not like I believe in wounded anymore, but that's the, the, the best vernacular I can find. So like I was saying, if you're on YouTube and what rings true for you here, there's my link to my Facebook account, reach out, okay? Uh, and, 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 and reach out to me and I'll tell you why, because I'll get you linked with everyone in this community. We've started an entire community here and it's, 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 it's starting to, to, to snowball. And, and it's, a he, it's a community of healing and it's working. And uh, I want you on board, okay? So we've got a, a message chat feature that we use uh, all week long. Uh, this is a, a, a weekly Zoom call on Sunday, but there's gonna be two Zoom calls soon. I will be getting to that in the, in the middle of the week, okay? Um, in the description also is a link to my YouTube channel. I told you I called myself the psychiatric shaman. I'm not a spiritual teacher with, with any answers. I'm a man who emerged and it's my trail of breadcrumbs, you know? So kind of like the, we used to say in the 12 steps, take what you like and leave the rest. Um, the last thing I'm gonna put this forward and I haven't said this in, 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 in all the months of, of this ministry, but it's finally gotta to, got to come down to this. I'm also putting a link to my PayPal account in, in the chat feature. Um, now I'm, I'm gonna be, begin to, to accept donations. Now, this is a very touchy subject because I, I'm not here to make money. Absolutely, I'm not here to profit. If I had my, if I had my ultimate wish, um, I wouldn't even have to be doing this. However, because I've been guided to go in this direction, this is becoming my full time right now. Um, I am going to accept donations. Okay, so there's a link to my PayPal, um, psychiatric shaman, PayPal me or something. Uh, so any love offerings uh, would go back so I could, you know, continue to to do this outreach. Um, that's my spiel. <laughs> that's that's my winded. Uh, 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 introduction. So this is your Zoom call. Uh, we go on for about, we, we, we try, I try not to go on for uh, uh, more than an hour and a half because of the record feature and the, the upload um, memory that I have um, access to. So no more than an hour and a half. Uh, after the hour and a half, the Zoom call will continue, but we're going to stop recording, you know, and then by two hours, I just get exhausted. So that's the, the extent of it. Um, every Sunday, it goes someplace in a different direction. So I'm just going to invite uh, what, what do you need? This is your Zoom call. It's, it's, I, I'm, not, I'm not any further ahead of anyone else. I'm doing this work with you. So this is your Zoom call. What do you want to hear? What's most helpful? Um, and I'm actually going to put someone on the spot this morning. <laughs> I'm going to put Kari on the spot. And I'll tell you why I'm going to put Kari on the spot. Because we talked uh, last night for about 45 minutes about a very valuable... Kari, are you, are you on board? Can you unmute yourself? Because I want you to share with us what share unmute yourself we were sharing something powerful last night and uh, i want it documented uh, that conversation it was about ascension symptoms not not you know we we we, we were not talking about oh these are withdrawal symptoms no <laughs> we knew there was there was more going on and i want that archived hi hi, hi chris i want that archived um do you do you feel guided to, to to start us off this morning sean's not here so could you start us off this morning <laughs> yeah, I'm on the spot. On the spot. I, was just, I was just trying to eat first. Um, <sighs> yeah, I don't know. It was so wise what we said last night because every because this is the narrative and all these you no know, withdraw, withdraw, withdraw. And and Kari, Kari and I joined on this, and we and, and I've been joining with others on this. Hey, there's more going on. This is not just a chemical withdrawal. This is a planetary ascension, and this all this anxiety is not pharmaceutically based. This anxiety is is there's a there's a you know I think that what I said to you yesterday, Carly, last night. There's a big reservoir of light that's pushing to the surface right now. And, you know, it may appear like a volcanic eruption, but in, in truth, it's, it's an organic birth process. I, I, I like these narratives. Remember, I come back to, to, to add a more empowering narrative onto these, you know, these injury illness stories. 
Yeah, a lot I think of what we're feeling is collective um, above and beyond the pharmaceuticals because, you know, I talked to, sorry, <laughs> still trying to get set up because I was eating. Um, you know, I talked to people that aren't pharmaceutical injured or whatever, and especially sensitive people, and they're feeling a lot of this as well. So I know we are, I, I don't exactly know what it means, but I know we are transforming from carbon to crystalline beings. And we've come into an, another place in the galaxy. And so, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I just, what I know is um, just to feel it all and to just move it through. Um, my, you know, I was kind of been in the 3D reality the last week or so, and I'm really working with my EMDR therapist on uh, radical acceptance, you know, with everything. So, you know, just to feel the feelings that you're feeling, but not to get stuck in those feelings. Nope. If I, if I could jump in, Tori, we also talked about synchronicities, and I want that added to this, this archive. Synchronicities are, are it, you know, it, we, we're, we, are, we have the authorship over our own emergence. So could, do you feel comfortable talking about that at all? Well, you know, I shared in our group, like, you know, the 2022 portal. You know, at the very end of the day, I, I, every day I get up and I do a, either at the end of the day or the beginning of the day, a gratitude practice, three people I send love to one intention for my day. And then I, I um, pull an angel card. And so I shuffled it 22 times for the magical 22 day. And then sure enough, the angel that came up was 22. And so to me, that is, and it was about truth and it was really spot on to what I was feeling and what, and so there is the synchronicities. There are the signs that you follow. Um, you know, Kenneth was saying he finds these little signs everywhere. I do too. I find feathers. So just, you know, I don't know exactly what it means, but to me, it's something magical. So I just... I've just really become aware and try to um, look for the magic and even the smallest of things. It's funny, I was, I get a lot of light that comes in in this <laughs> um, window in my bedroom and I was laying in the sun the other day because the sun was actually out trying to get some light codes. And I showed Adam and Adam's like, Kari, you need to go outside. So, I listened to him. I took his, his advice and I went and I sat in my chair out back and it was just really magical, you know, and just the birds. And so just really my theme for this year is finding joy. So that's what I'm doing. I'm finding joy in even the smallest of things, the sunshine coming in my window and, you know, brightening my day. What, so. what we both came to, Kari, is we, we both came to the conclusion that the universe was conspiring for our emergence. Is, did, I, did I say that correctly? We, we both decided and we both had proof that the universe was conspiring to, to, to move us into, to, to, to emerge us. Yeah. 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 Um, Mary, this, this, I've been listening and I, I want to get to everyone ASAP. I'm taking notes, of, but, but um, because everyone here has contributed as something so valuable to contribute. But Mary, I saw you doing this. <laughs> Would you like to unmute yourself and explain to us what this is or where this is coming from? <laughs> but you got to unmute yourself first. There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. What, what did you see me doing? I'm too blind to see what you're doing. <laughs> well, you, you, you are obviously in, in sync with us. So I want to hear about your, your take, you know, on, we just, we just take this, you know, we're, we're just coming at it from all different angles. What's, what's mm -hmm. your angle on this? I love working with you. You know, we, we did inquiry, but what's your angle on what Kari just shared? Uh, I was, I was agreeing. Um, it took me back. Uh, and I feel like the times that I've talked on here, I always go back to the same week <laughs> where things kind of came apart so much that they could never come back together the same way again. And she, she took me back to that. 
Uh, you're muted. Uh, unmute yourself one more time, Mary. There you go. Hold turkey. Are you okay? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. No, there no. was a week years ago where I completely discontinued benzodiazepines, uh, cold turkey. Uh, and I was on week three of withdrawal where I went into acute psychosis. And, um, you know, people talk about their low, hitting the lowest point in their life. And that, that was where I was at. And I was choosing to do it alone. And I wouldn't take myself to the hospital because <laughs> I didn't really care at that point what happened to me. And so it was just me and God, to be honest. And I discussed this later with a friend who's incredibly spiritual. She's been on a spiritual journey since she was 15, a former student of mine. And she said, you know, you were attacked mind, body, and spirit. She said, you were under attack. And I said, it sure felt that way. And um, she said, no, she said, let's go through this. She said, you were in a horrible car accident. You're in perpetual pain from your spine. You, I, I suffered a mild traumatic brain injury during that car accident, which wasn't diagnosed until almost eight years later. So it was accounting for certain changes in me, particularly bad memory and difficulty uh, following instructions. I mean, doing my own job, I'm a classically trained pianist and I teach classical piano and I've done it my whole life, but I, I suddenly couldn't fill out the paperwork. <laughs> I was just easily confused. And then on top of that, I was prescribed a Valium to help with all the the muscle uh, contractions that never stop. And I became, uh, I hit a point where I had paradoxical reactions from Valium. I would break things and I would yell like crazy yells. And, and I decided that I was going to take matter into my own hands. And I was gonna start with getting all the junk out of my body. And I went to this point where I was at my lowest. My body was, was not my body anymore my mind i couldn't depend on it the way i had it wasn't the same brain but the one thing that was the same was my spirit and my spirit however was suffering the most okay, and i yeah. i feel that when i was on valium i don't feel i know um i lost my sensitivities i lost my intuition I lost my ability to just see, as, as Akari said, you know, it's the magic in life that's really what's most important because that's what keeps us aware that we're not just three-dimensional. We're not here to just eat, sleep, poop, and die, you know? That's, that's incidental stuff. And, and a lot of the stuff we get caught up in and think is the meaning of life sometimes isn't it's just the incidental stuff and i was supposed to learn that you know mary you're not you're not that kind of brainiac anymore i can read deep stuff but my memory's so bad so you know i lot a lot of the things that i thought it was i guess i should say i was i'm not the kind of intellectual that i was um i'm not even the kind of concert pianist that i was i, I can't practice like i used to my body's not the same um but what what I was it was taken away from me in in some ways, because I wasn't supposed to think I was those things anymore, and and the most painful one was that my daughter went to live with her father during that time and didn't come back and and we are let's let's kind of let's can I can I kind of jump in yeah, here let's yeah. what what I'm what I'm hearing I, I my role as a facilitator is to compartmentalize so we can get to everybody but. You, yeah. you have a message in, in all of this, and that's that's important, Mary. The, these okay. stories yeah. are valuable, but yeah. I, I just, I, I, I heard a message in there. And yeah. the message is, is exactly, you know, worth archiving. And, and you've shared this message with us before. And can you share it with us again, what, what the discovery from this came to be? Yeah, the discovery was that I was not my body, that I was not my mind, and that my spirit was always there and that I needed to get in touch with it. And it was not gonna be something that was possible as long as I took something that was mind altering, like Valium. Uh, and, when I, and when I got off it, all that energy and feelings and emotions and sensitivities, you know, hit me really hard at first. I think anyone who's gone through that will relate. Um, you, you, you're ov overly sensitive even. For someone who's always been overly sensitive, it was like, crash landing into sensitivity, but that was okay. And, and I had to learn again, how to uh, communicate with people emotionally 
but I was able to take it so much farther this time. And I was able to, thanks to the, the brain injury and thanks to whatever injury Valium did to my brain, which I know that there was quite a bit, I was able to hook into the whole neuroplasticity thing. And interestingly, I was led to learning about that at the time. And I was like, I can retrain my brain to be how I want to be. I can retrain my brain not to be codependent. I can retrain my brain to love myself. And I can retrain my brain to look at a situation, for instance, when I'm teaching one of my students. And I can teach the whole student better because I can watch their emotions as they learn music. And frequently, the lesson of the day with my students is not, how do we master this passage? It's like, it's deeper than that. It's, it's deep enough that sometimes the lesson has to be ended and we have a tea party um, mm -hmm. because that's what their soul needs to feel nurtured. And, and I did do that the other day. We, we stopped a lesson where a little girl was almost in tears just because she couldn't do it. And we had a tea party. We said, you know, it's time for a tea party. And we threw one right in the middle of the piano. And the next day or the next mm -hmm. week, she brought me a piece of homemade uh, sweet potato pie. It's a tiny little girl that she made mm -hmm. that for me because she left there with a mm -hmm. better feeling than she could have ever had had we mastered that spot. So I feel like I got redirected onto the right path with why I'm here. Perfect. That's that's it. That's it. A course correction. You know, no mistakes. Mm -hmm. Course correction. Um, I, Mary, I, we'll get back to you, but I want to like play the Hollywood Squares game. And the next thing oh, I had okay. a note, I, I had uh, I had noted I wanted to to have Greg jump in this call, and I'll tell you why. Um, Greg Greg posted to our, if you don't mind me sharing this, Greg. You know, there was a, a perfect post. He's smiling. <laughs> there was a perfect post. You know, in the in the group chat. You know, which was I want this archive. He said. Why did it take me 46 years? Perfect. That, that's got to be brought forward. Because there was a, um, perfect, because we've all gone through this. Why did it, you know, we're, and, and I want to I wanna extinguish that narrative too, because there was a, a or there mm -hmm. is a essay floating around the internet that I found three years ago called The Script is Written. And, and, and Greg, Greg was honest because he said, uh, I, I, I started to read it, but it, 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 it wasn't completely clear. So I want, to see if we can get clarity on it. Each one of us has a timeline, each one of us. There is nothing mm -hmm. that we could do. Now this is Course in Miracles. Remember, this is a Course in Miracles Zoom. It's becoming a Course in Miracles Zoom, basically, because that's where my emergence comes from. Well, we bring in more, but I'm, I'm, that's, that's where my uh, uh, foundation is. But according to this, to, to, to this, uh, this essay, um, we've all come in with a timeline. And there's nothing we can do to change the timeline itself. You know, Greg's had, Greg has his emergence. You know, Greg was not allowed to meet me until age 46. I was not allowed to get off my clonopin until age 42. And it, trying to change the timeline, impossible. Now, that doesn't put us into victim. That actually takes us in the other direction of empowerment. Because now that we realize we have no control over what's happening, zero control over what's happening mm -hmm. in our world we now mm -hmm. can change how we're perceiving it that's where our empowerment is how are we perceiving what's happening now that's a lot that's a, that's 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 a, a a huge you know chunk but but greg do you want to can do, do can you jump in with that because this this was this all came from your post by the way buddy and i had to i had to bring that into the call basically okay. greg you you, you could I'm not feeling not. the passion. What do you want me to say? I don't know what I want you to say. Um, uh, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm just bringing the point home that this there was no possible. The, the psychiatric parable was written into our scripts before we were born. Period. Before yeah. we were even born, right. there was a, there was a, a script mm -hmm. we had to read, and, and, and it included a psychiatric parable. It included Valium, included benzodiazepines, included psych meds, it included mental illness. Now. We've all of us have reached a point in our timeline where now is the time for the emergence. See, mm -hmm. this, this, I'm, I'm, I'm removing all of this, you know, this shouldn't have happened, you know, mm -hmm. beliefs. Those beliefs mm -hmm. are, are going out the window mm -hmm. in the Zoom call that anything yeah, ever could have possibly gone wrong. There, I'll shut up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, well, I think my latest development, you know, last night I was calling you and I was, I was into the ego. I was definitely into the ego, and it was the the woulda, coulda, shoulda kind of thing. Um, I learned a lot about my past trauma, 
And I learned about the vocabulary uh, of the personality disorders I was in and everything. But last night, that's where I was stopping. Um, I read something called the Triangle of Self-Obsession. And that, that kind of helped me out last night. It was, um, we can see the past, present, and the future. We can see the past with resentment or acceptance. We can see the present with anger or love. And we can see the future with hope or with fear. So I'm trying to go from the negative to the positive. Um, I kind of, I kind you know, I have my moments where I get stuck, but um, overall, I think I'm making progress, and I think I'm starting to let go um, and everything. Um, yeah, and I'm tired of hearing myself talk about it, so I'm not going into the <laughs> what happened because I'm, I'm really, I, I'll make myself nauseous. Um, but but I, I want to point out, you, Greg, um, and I want this archived. You, you, you text me. You text me when you get stuck. And, and this morning, at, 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 you know, you texted me this morning. I happened to be awake at 12 midnight and we talked. Perfect. Uh -huh. We get stuck. We text somebody. We start uh -huh. talking and we, we, uh -huh. we pull out of this together. I was perfect. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 It's just so much. Life is just so much better when you quit trying to control the thing. Um, and, and I like your story, Carrie. Um, when I was 20, somebody told me something. He said, you're not your mind. You're not your body. You're not your emotions. What are you? And that just stuck with me for so long. I guess that's what you see happen. Uh, Mary is what I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, is it, is it, she saw that you weren't those three things. Um, and that's truly spiritual to me. That's that's pretty profound. When you lose all those things, and then you can come back, then you know who you are. So, yeah. And and if I'll, I'll Mary, Mary, you can jump in, but I got to jump in. I can't not jump in because that's the whole that's the whole slogan of the psychiatric shaman. Because once we once we ask who are we, oh. you can't we can't damage who we are. It can't. Yeah. It, it, there's there's no substratum for the for the damage hypothesis anymore you know and I, i'm sorry you're, you know it, it, you know listen yeah yeah maybe maybe it's harder to play you know the concert pianist you know tunes kind of like my friend alan who lost you know the the use of his arms and his legs after his diving accident he found out who he was because of his diving accident we're finding out who we are because of our psychiatric withdrawals everything is cons like back to kari the universe is conspiring on our behalf i'm not just saying this is not pollyanna pink paint this is my direct experience is it difficult yeah and that's why i'm dedicating you know this this entire zoom call you know and all these outreach because this is priority now there I'm, shut me up again did you want to go mary <laughs> do i want to go somebody's got to go and shut me up <laughs> well I know I, I think I think all of us have learned on this journey that you know that the the labels we gave ourselves and the labels that we've been given teacher mother father whatever mm. your label is that those those labels were all, always superficial and mm. we identified too much with them we identified with too much with our production what can I produce in a day uh, what do I know and it was it was never about that and I, I think you're right I, it isn't pulled out right from underneath you it's just too easy to get distracted by the things that we are and not learn who we really are underneath all that and and in some of our cases those things had to be pulled away for good because um, maybe if nothing else by a sense of duty we were going to go back to uh, tethering ourselves to those labels and and you can't you can't ascend or, or or you can't transform until you stop thinking you are this thing um we're all so much more than any label no matter how long yeah. Kristen Kristen can you mute yourself I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and mute Kristen. hi yeah Kristen we're going to mute you until it's your turn there all right um I, I want to get to Kristen that that was that was my label. I, I was supposed to be the humanitarian savior. I was supposed to save the world. You know, um, I was supposed to save the world through intellect and heart. That that was what I was supposed to do. 
So I'm not sure what it is now. You know, I don't know what the new one is. But that's what the old one was. That's huh? the entrance to mysticism, Gray. The entrance to mysticism is is, is when we, we, we throw up our hands and say, I don't know. The entrance mm -hmm. to a mysticism mm -hmm. is the beginning of emergence. And it's 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 the only true prayer that can be heard is I don't know. Show me. Now mm -hmm. um I want to get to Christy and I and I want to get to Chris. Um did, did either one of you, both of you have been great, you know, valuable uh returns either one of you want to add to that because I, I get both i get i just try to get the rounds we'll, we'll get back to, to everyone but i want to you know even out this sharing you guys got to unmute yourselves first christy or chris do you want to there you go chris got yeah, himself I'll, on mute. I'll jump in i you know i <clears throat> i hesitate to share today because i'm just i feel so been su in such a negative space lately mm -hmm. but um i just wanted to join because this group always makes me feel better and uh, <laughs> so but yeah i'm struggling um just so negative you know and uh and i you know i i just don't know what to like uh how to separate um the thoughts sometimes i, I i'm stuck between oh is this my intuition and i'm reconnecting with myself and i need to work through that or is it just withdrawal and do i need to ignore Ellie, come here. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I guess I don't have much to share this morning because I, I just feel so stuck in a negative thinking. I, this is great. I mean, Chris, that's vulnerability. Heart, part of mine emerges. I'm perfect. There's, there's, we, we show up no matter what. That's what I said last week. We show up no matter what. And, and the vulnerability too. Yeah. I, this is my emergence is when I call people and say, I, I am so lost. I am so confused. I am so hurt and I am so angry. And, and I, I, I just allow, you know, and I, I, it takes the pressure relief valve off to allow that too. And, and, and buddy, that's, and, and, and now that you have the courage to, to let others see you fall, this is why it's, it's so valuable. You know, we, we need to have the courage to let others see us fall apart because then when we start to reassemble, uh, and I think, I don't remember who it was saying this, somebody said it, you know, when we reassemble differently, that that's the definition of a lighthouse. They, they, they stop and they say, you know, they, they see us just completely unravel. And then, you know, soon they see us completely renewed. And, and, and now, now we become teachers, just not because we have any theology to share, but because we have been willing to to, to show up and to face it and to, 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 to do it. So, yeah, good work. Yeah, that's what I, that's the thanks. That's what I'm hoping, you know, I feel like I'm in a space where it's like, I, I kind of have no other choice but to surrender and trust that things will get better because I feel out of options and out of answers. But I know, I know what y'all are saying is true. I know it, but man, it's like when, when you get stuck in a feeling, you know, it's so hard to like, um, I don't know. I just feel like, uh, lately my old tricks haven't been working, you know? And so anyway, just trying to roll with it. I, I see that you're outside. I'm going to, I've never done this before on a zoom call. I see that you're outside. You know, one of the things that I've done in, in, in my, um, you know, in reaching out and asking for help, if I've, I've actually screamed, and, and just said, I can't do this. Ah! And just purged it out. And, 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 and just by, by, by ex expressing, you know, to, to that extent, you know, and having others hold the space, you know, I, I, I got through to the other side. If, if at any time, you know, we, we might even hold a Zoom call where others, you know, had the permission to go out in a, in a safe place and just express the the enormity of the frustration um basically it's like i'd like to send an invitation you know for us to take the lid off this sometime yeah that's a good idea you know i've i've uh certainly had things come out when i've meditated you know a lot of anger and like expression you know um and it always feels good you know it feels like uh it just needs to come out and um yeah, it's like a like you said, a pressure release valve for sure. Um, you know, if 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 there was, 
because I, I know the, the, the archetypes uh, of, of each one of you, because you've all been in the Zoom call before, you know, this is, this is not an invitation for any venting. This is an invitation for expressing, you know, none, none of us are, 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 you know, not that I've heard in the last several weeks and I've seen all of you, you know, several times, has there ever been any blame? This would be a raw and authentic purgation of, of pain. And, and I, I, I truly am feeling guided that at some point, if any one of you were out in a, in, a, in a private location and you felt like asking the permission to just scream it all out and put it on YouTube, it would help countless just to, to see that sometimes, you know, we, we just, it's, it's okay to hurt to the core of our being because, because at the core of our being, you know, lives exactly the Holy Grail that emerged my soul and it's emerging my soul. Thanks to each one of you. I really appreciate that, Kenneth. You know, I think I, what I've noticed is like, you know, throughout all this, there's the emotions that come up, right? Whether they're side effects or spiritual stuff or, or past hurt, whatever that's coming up. But then there's also like our reaction to those emotions. And what you just said, like really touches on my reaction to my own emotions, which is usually shame and guilt. And I beat myself up for feeling bad, which is like this, you know, I think a cycle we can all relate to, but what you just said that like, yes, yeah, sometimes you just need to feel it and that's what you're in and, and like to just accept that. Um, I don't know. It's just really helpful to hear. I appreciate that. Well, Chris, that's perfect because in my story, I had a teacher by the name of Teal Swan who, who shared with me in one of her videos, I've never met her, but I had this internal police officer in my head and I still do. And as soon as, you know, the unacceptable emotions, you know, come forward, yeah. the internal pol corrections officer, says yep. stop it shouldn't My mother, even feel that way yeah yeah we're 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 unemploying the the corrections officer and we're, we're given a permission slip here yeah you know i think it took for me i needed to be crushed and destroyed and ground into the dirt over and over and over again well, but before you go any further tina can i can i, I i'm sorry I, it's not appropriate to, to to correct the metaphysical language but i i have to jump in your dream character your dream character was crushed your dream character was 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 you know because i just if, if would it be possible to invite you to change the language into the, using the, the dream character instead of me yeah and so you know i needed to go through that in order to see what was really important in life. You know, there were a lot of things I cared about that I felt were most important before I went through that process. But afterwards, it's kind of like my eyes were completely open to, you know, acceptance and realizing that even though it was not a pleasant thing, it has put me on the right path. It has showed me where I need to go, what I need to do, what's important, what's not important. And it, it really helped to um, reveal the person that I was always meant to be. Mm -hmm. Tina, that, that has come up, this, this word, you just used the word reveal. You brought a whole new word into this, this Zoom call that um, was also shared by Mary. Um, each one is, is at what we've all described a revealing, all of us, beyond pharmaceuticals, we're all experiencing a revealing. And you know, uh, Chris, when I'm listening to you talk, I just keep going back in my mind and thinking about when I was a child, my grandparents used to travel out west and they'd bring home, you know, rocks and different kind of things and they'd put them in a rock polisher. And that thing would run and run and run and run day and night for weeks. And when those rocks finally came out of there, they were beautiful. They were shiny and colorful. And brother, you're in the rock polisher right now. You're in the rock polisher and it's, it, it's polishing you and, 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 and making you better and brighter and shinier. And it's, you're, you're in that process right now. That's where you're at. This is perfect. Yeah, thanks, this is support. Good work. I love this. 
Christy, is, is any of this ringing true? Christy, we'll get back to you, Mary. Um, I, <laughs> already 45 minutes and I haven't heard from you yet. <laughs> it very much is, it very much is. Um, even from the beginning of the meeting, I was thinking about how much I love um, sunshine as I forget the lady's name in the beginning, the sunshine uh, just coming through the window. It's like, I love it. Like I, little things like that I'd never ever paid attention to before. And I was also thinking about how, yeah, life is definitely not um, what I imagined it to be for me at all. But um, mm. like I've, <clears throat> I'm still looking, my two words I've been focusing on this week is courage and surrender. Um, I have surrendered the pills, right? I have physically surrendered them, but I have not mentally surrendered them because um, I've yet to really go out and live. I stay close to my house um, because when stimulation gets me or, or this or that, um, I don't have a, um, mentally, I don't have a crutch, but see, I'm a spirit, right? So I'm learning to understand that my spirit doesn't need a crutch. Um, so I'm still trying to strengthen that. But even though I've been living close to around my house, most people, you know, there was a time that that would have been, um, that would have driven me to a complete, you know, very bad state. I'm the happiest I've ever been because every day I wake up, I am so excited for what God's going to show me every day. I'm so excited. Um, yes, I, I get uh, frustrated. I have moments where I have punched the walls and <laughs> cried, not understood any of this. Um, and then it's like, you can cry that out and then you can just sit there on the floor and look up at the sky and start laughing because you're so thankful at the same time that, <clears throat> that the, the person who created me loves me enough to show me that there's more. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Good. This is something a little bit off the wall, but have, has anyone ever heard um, of Charles Bradley before? The R&B artist? Have y'all heard of that song by uh, Black, uh, Black Sabbath called Changes? Mm -hmm. He redid it, and it's just uh, it's in a video, and it's with him. It just shows his face. Oh, boy, it's soulful. Anyways, I think what happened to me last night is I saw some changes, and I wanted more to happen. And I think I just, I, I guess it's the old let go and let God and just let them make these changes because I think I've been a little too obsessed with this whole thing. And I just kind of want more and more and more and more, um, more changes because where I was before it, it definitely could not, I could not stay where I was. So I think, I think I'm just, I'm just been trying, I think it's been, let's see, almost 14 months for me in my okay. life. My health for one thing is just, come back in these changes I'm almost addicted and obsessed with changing everything I possibly can in every way but I think I'm starting to see that this is just going to happen anyways and I've been kind of stuck on a timeline not necessarily withdrawal timeline that's probably part of it but I've just been wanting it to happen more and more and okay. I just, I just, I, I guess I need to let go of it and just be happy. And, you know, you just know, go with the flow. Go with the flow. You know, as as go you're ahead. talking, Greg. You know, I, I'm I'm brought to to remember the analogy that one of my teachers gave me years ago. That people think that you know, you know a, a a bird lays an egg and the, the the chick just breaks out of the shell one day. That that's that's not that's not the full story. The, the, the yolk actually, you know, begins to putrefy in the egg itself. That, that chick would not be kicked its way out of the, the egg unless the yolk became putrid. The same, the same is true for all of us who, you know, are going through an awakening. Now, each one of us, you know, had to surrender the pharmaceuticals. So there's the, the withdrawals are a lot of, a lot of, um, the withdrawals are a component in the support group, but all of us are kicking our way out of these shells. So that's what I got when, when you're sharing. I wanna just, you know, reframe everything. Kristen, you're still muted. Um, would you be interested in sharing? I wanna give each person equal time uh, before we kind of do the free for all. And if you don't unmute yourself, I'm gonna unmute you. Kristen. Yeah, hi, uh, I have a few dogs here. Go. So I, I put myself on mute because I've got a few dogs and they were being loud. 
So I didn't want you guys to hear that. <laughs> um, how's, how's this sounding for you on a Sunday morning, Kristen? Do you want to do you want to jump in? I say that again. I'm sorry. How's this sound? Did anything here resonate with you? Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm sorry. I don't. Sometimes I don't fully listen or fully grasp it. But I'm doing the best I can with it. And yeah, I'm always learning. It's definitely a journey, and it's taken a while. Of course, I want it quicker. And I talked to Charles. Or, uh, what do we call Greg. him? Greg about. Yeah. Sorry, Greg. I talked to Greg about it because I want it fast. You know, I'm sick of waiting and um. So that's not going to happen. So that's not when you, uh, what do you call it? Um, let go or like, what do you call that word you guys just used? Um, you know, surrender. So I'm not surrendering. I, I don't mean that. Well, that's, that's, that's perfect. I'm glad you brought that in because my yeah. teacher, you know, I'm going to give a little bit of a lecture here quickly before okay. we get on to um, yeah. um, the next. But my teacher's always telling me, that infinite patience produces immediate results. Mm. <laughs> Say that again. Infinite patience. Patience produces immediate results. Hmm. That's crazy. All right. <laughs> Figure that one out. It's an oxymoron. Huh? <laughs> Something like oh, that. Man. Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Who's, who, just, who just joined uh, us? Jump um, in for let me, a second. Let me get you. I, I just have a question with that. How I would love to know how other people, um, even in the midst of this patience, because I think that's so important, right? Is the patience, the patience. Like um, when you have family members who keep saying, well, your life's just passing you by. Your life's just passing you by. Um, and then I'm like, what am I missing out there? Like, why are we so distracted that we have to be out doing <laughs> to be living? Um, so I was just wondering how people may deal with family who kind of tries to pressure you into that hunkering one. through and just going out there and living, you know, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, like I'm, I'm okay. I wasn't okay, but I have become okay in this process and being patient that I am where I am just for today. And it, it, it it's hard for me to tell family members that, um, I don't really have a desire to go out with them certain places. I just don't. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Thank you, Christy. Yeah. 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 I, I think, I think that's, that's what I needed to hear patience in the process and that, yeah, I mean, don't get caught up with the world, worldly things, I guess you could say. And so, is that what you're saying? Kind of. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing that we need to tend to that's so important that's not already happening, I guess, I, is what I'm saying. Maybe now's the time to bring in. I, I shared with everyone last week that I'd gotten a very, very painful letter from, from one of my long lost family members. It was, it was only 24 hours, you know, it had been on last Saturday morning. Uh, and I, I'll share with everyone, I've been on the phone for the last eight days. I'm, I'm getting my own help. I hadn't heard from my biological brother in, in, in you know, 30 years on this. Well, I, that's not true. But anyway, it was a long story short, very painful letter. Now, but what I want to get to was the help. Because I had a very wise uh, friend who, who would not jump into my story. A wise, a loving person is not going to go into our stories. Um, they'll make space, you know, because if, if we still believe in our own stories, but, you know, otherwise it would be a, a false empathy that that's not going to help anyone. But the, the friend did point out what I needed to hear is that he said, he said, family is a construct. <clears throat> and, and he said, was that helpful? I said, well, it's, it's, and I was just on, I said, I said, I can hear that in my head, but it's going to take time to sink in. But it has, that's why this is a metaphysical support group. You know, my biological brother is a construct in my head. Yeah. Therefore, it is my responsibility how I view the construct itself. So based on that, you know, uh, he can say anything he wants to me. How I react is, has been the last eight days, my own reaction. That's all I have authorship over. Um, Ray, um, can you unmute yourself because you, you jumped in a little bit late and you've, you've been participating, you know, with great stuff for the last, you know, two months. I, can, you got anything to, to, to share with us? Yeah, sorry, no, I was so late. <laughs> hey, 
Um, I think, oh, are you talking to him or me? No, uh, Greg, um, Greg, I'm, I'm talking to Ray here. Um, I've got to give okay. this one. Uh, I thought so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know. I, I, I just got here. I, um, I don't really have anything specific to share at the moment. Uh, no, just sorry. I was so late, <laughs> but yeah. You know, I, the reason I want to, Ray, I even wrote you that apology letter, which I don't even think you remember what I was apologizing for, but last week I was really tired and towards the end of the zoom call, you know, you pointed out that, that we have to basically in a nutshell, what you were saying is, We've got to gently unwind. I was I was getting tired, and I was saying just just you know unwind the dream character. But your um, your uh, injection was was very wise, and I want to bring that forward this week because you you corrected me and said no, Kenneth, we need to gently unwind, and and that that could not be more true. I want that document. We we do this work slowly and gently. Okay, I I don't. Really I don't remember saying it, but I'll take your word for it. It was wiser than what I had to offer after an hour and a half. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm doing fine right now. I, uh, you know, I'm going through this again. I got off the chronophid. Now I'm getting off the antidepressants and uh, my story's kicking in as I'm getting lower because probably uh, just the worry about it. So I'm, I'm you, dealing with that as best I can. You weren't here. You, you got in late. And, and if yeah. you want to watch the archive, you'll see. We, we started bringing forward the topic of vulnerability because, because you know, Chris and I were talking about vulnerability. And I, I even brought forward that it might even be helpful to do an experiment where if someone has a, a, a quiet, you know, secluded space, they could, you know, archive um, a tremendous yell, just a... <laughs> not not a not a victim yell a, a tremendous uh a expression primal scream. Of, a primal yeah, what, scream call it? primal scream that's yeah. primal scream yeah agreed and agreed <laughs> the grief i i had an aunt who was from mexico city um and i i can't not include her in the zoom call you know she had her own psychiatric parable but she my, my family said she was mentally ill because sometimes she would scream they said, oh, she screams. She must be mentally ill. She needs a Valium. No. She's a screamer. My aunt was grieving. She would grieve. She would wail the loss of my cousin. My cousin died from alcoholism at age 39. She, she, she said, get over here, Kenneth. It's time for you to see me grieve. And that woman from Mexico City let out a scream like hell hath no fury because she said, I cannot allow my heart to close. So this is what it's going to look like, kiddo. Take note. Mm. Yeah. yeah it's wild most of us westerners get she was from mexico city westerners are very you know we're a very primitive culture when when it comes to grief and and my my psych you know you know my dream character i grieved the, the loss of my dream character kenny you know yeah it makes well, you wonder how, how much how much grief happens because we're so against showing emotions you know, why is it wrong to scream? She lost her son. Uh, that seems scream worthy, you know, but yet, no, the problem is with the screamer. They shouldn't be screaming. It's too much. It's too loud. It's too frequent. You know, all this policing of other people's behaviors and emotions. So that's a lot of it, Chris. Yeah, Thank me you. too. I, I have I to add a happy ending onto my aunt's story. Now I have to add a happy ending because she went on to raise, my, my cousin died from alcoholism. So she raised his daughter. Um, she went on to raise the only functional member in my entire family. <laughs> and happy ending by the way, <laughs> because her granddaughter had an open heart and still does only functional member of my family. All right, I, I don't want to dwell on that. Who, who wants to take the ball and run with that? I, uh, I, I used to oh, do I'm the sorry. same. I would get in my car and uh, just take a ride out on the highway someplace and just scream while I was driving. Scream, cry, mm -hmm. yell, holler, pound the steering wheel. So yeah, uh, I had always thought that if a highway patrol pulled alongside and saw that, I was going to 
be committed that day, but <laughs> it was definitely helpful. You know, when I, when I was coming off uh, my medications or my, my, the big one, clonopin, and I, I don't talk a lot about my story, but that would have been about 13 years ago. Um, they did call the police on me because I, I went out in the cornfields. I went out for miles in the cornfields and I let out a scream. And then the farmer called the cops. The farmer. <laughs> the police showed up. I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get so harmless. I didn't hear the last so part. Con. I'm sorry. Everybody I'm laughed. I didn't con. get it. I think we just need to laugh. Kenneth okay. frightened a farmer. It's oh, just okay. about a farmer. <laughs> that's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> That tells you that no matter no matter where you went in that environment, you were not going to be allowed to scream. Mm -hmm. That's a great, you know, I hate to, you guys, whoever said that, um, that's exactly how I feel. It doesn't matter where I am, I can't make noise, so I, I have to stifle it, and it's really, trying, it's kind of blowing me up, you know, it's, it's terrible. But I used to get in the car and scream when I was driving, not driving, I get, and I just scream until my throat hurt. And now I'm always around somebody, somebody can hear me, and I feel like I have to just be quiet. And it's really aggravating me. It's actually causing a lot more anger. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does, Kristen. But okay. I feel okay. similar, but I guess I'll, I'll, I'll say to you what I, I'll say to myself. It's like, what? no one's forcing us to be quiet. We're choosing to be quiet, choosing mm -hmm. not to express ourselves. I'm afraid of the cops coming, so, and I don't well, want to be put away. <laughs> sure. No, I <laughs> No, I mean, you know, but the like, paranoia, but yeah. Right. But I think a lot of those fears, at least for me, and maybe you can relate, like, I think a lot of those fears are, are kind of in our heads or like, oh, yeah, for sure. You know, the stories we tell ourselves, like, I'm not allowed to share my emotions. I wish I could, but I can't because there's other people around me. It's like, well, I'm choosing to allow mm -hmm. those other people around me to affect go. my behavior. Mm -hmm. Um, This is a good time. I, 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 I got to jump in and just share with the group that I, you, you all know that I'm, I belong to the Living Miracles community. Um, no spiritual community is perfect. We got to put that forward first. <laughs> However, they do offer permission slips for expression. When I when I found them five years ago, um, I I had to ask, but I asked one of the the messengers to go out with in, in the in the desert with me. You know, I'd only been off. Uh, you know, I'd been off my last antidepressant. You know, for uh, about one year, and he gave me a permission slip to throw rocks and to bash the trees with sticks while he held mm. space you know so that's that's um you know I, I i don't i don't tell people to meditate through the pain um i'm i'm the one who will go out into the the, the woods with you in the desert and and stand there and just you know say say the sing the ikaros while you know someone pounds the the, the trees with the irreconcilability of the dream character itself can i add this too that i just came into my awareness in the last two weeks a friend of mine had posted on Facebook that she went to a rage room. Do y'all know about rage rooms? It's the new mm -hmm. rage here in America where you rent out this space and you go in there with all suited up with a baseball bat or a sledgehammer and you just. Oh. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up now, but and there's a caveat because I, 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 the caveat is important. Perfect. This is this, I, this, I, this is the best zoom call number 16 so far. Now, we go into that rage room with one intention. We go into the rage room with the intention to turn this over. We're handing it. We're not going in there to vent. We're going in there to hand it over to spirit. We're saying, spirit, this is exactly what I want you to handle because this is, this is you know what I'm choosing to let go of. So it's the intention that we take into the rage room itself. I had to add that caveat, but I, Kari, perfect. Yeah, I found one like 10 minutes from here. I'm going, but I love that, Kenneth. I do like the intent and going into the intention. And... Kari, I'm flying, I'm flying to the East Coast and I'm gonna stand there and I'm gonna honor you with, 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 with shamanic ikoros, you know, and, and when I see that energy flying out, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch it with, with every single shamanic tool that I've got in my bag of tricks there, even though I'm not a credential shaman. <laughs> um, can I ask you I guys something? Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. In a, second, in a second, but, you know, everything, okay. Kari, everything that comes out in that rage room, we don't want it. Spirit wants it. It's a mm -hmm. perfect exchange. God wants what we don't. You know, the, the, that, that rage room is the bridge for us to hand it over. 
hand it over, hand it over. All right, who, that Kristen would, yeah, I, I I'm, had, sorry, I'm getting I, I, to I'm sorry that I interrupted. Um, I, what, what I noticed is, this is, might be my codependency, but I was like, I felt safe as soon as Kenneth said somebody was with him. You know, you went out and beat a tree or something like that. And then, of course, this lady goes to the rage room, but I, they're strangers. But I just like, I want somebody that knows me with me at all mm-hmm. times if, when I rage, because I do rage. I'm not proud of it. You know, I mean, I'm like, I don't, I haven't acted on it recently, but I have in the past. But I, I feel if somebody's with me, my behavior, I feel safer. And mm-hmm. that's probably not a great thing. You know, I kind of no, want to. Yeah. No, Kristen, that's that's perfectly. This is this is our inner child work because mm. when when the when the child has to go through a meltdown, the the parent doesn't doesn't mm. the parent just stands and 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 says you know this and says I know who you are I know who you are I know who you are, and the child can get to the other side. That okay. that's not a you know that's that request um, is valid in my book. Okay. Right. I think what the parent is saying is, I love you. And, 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 you know, I know who you are, you know, separate from the, the, the store. I'm getting complicated. Who wants to pick up on that? No, I, when you say that, you, that means I remember doing, I've done some that child love work. And then I have to pretend I'm the mother to me and I'm a child and I got to go through all that. And I'm really like, man, I just really want a person here. That's not me. You know, I don't even know if that makes any sense to you guys. I'd love one of you guys with me to go. It'd be weird. Like I feel close to you guys, like I said, in family. So if one of you guys would be with me when I raged, I'd feel more comfortable because I think you'd understand what I'm going through. And, but that's not life for me right now. I just, I don't have anyone. And that's just not, you know what I mean? I can't produce it. Does that make sense? That's a huge problem for me. That's the only reason I'm bringing it up. You guys, mm-hmm. I have to come up with something that's going on it, you know? Well, this this whole ministry is formulating, you know, a permission slip for us to to um, to do all of this, you know, to 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 surrender these 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 pharmaceuticals. Basically, (laughs) this is I listen, everyone knows that I've taken ayahuasca. I've I've, I've never kept a secret from anyone. You know, I've done about seven ceremonies and and part of the ayahuasca ceremony. So it's an entheogen that you don't want to do without a credential shaman. But Part of the ayahuasca ceremony, ceremony is called La Porga, La Porga, Spanish for throw up. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, when you take the medicine, the medicine raises your frequency and pushes out everything that's, that's, that's not in alignment with the higher vibration. And it, it, you, people get very, very sick. You throw up. You throw up everything that will not stand the light. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so kind of visualize a, a prime, Kari called it a primordial screen, you know, visualize it as a, a porga but also remember in this in the in the ayahuasca ceremonies you've got a sh- you've got shamans who are going around the room you know honoring la porga they honor it that's why i said kari if you want to do the, the the rage room you know I'll, I'll i'll i wish i had a you know frequent flyer miles I'd, I'd get to the east coast and i would honor watching my friend kari say enough is enough you know take i'm putting you into the light and while you're taking that that bat and you're smashing all those 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 vases you're saying you know this is going into the light now i'm stamping it (laughs) okay thank you you know this is part this is the reason you know i'm in these spiritual communities i've i've been comp well i've been number one i've been you know they all a lot of the women have come up to me and said you're teaching us because I, I go through this in the, in, the, in the Living Miracles community, I've had more than one person come up to me and say, you know, you're teaching me that it's safe to let my anger out. And then I go to them and I say, you're teaching me it's safe to let my tears out. They're teaching me tears. I'm teaching them anger, you know, and, 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 and beyond the tears and the anger, the stories have no more substratum. And without the substratum, you know, we're, 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 we're raising our frequency no more no more pills someone's got to jump on that because yeah, you don't yeah. want to hear go go any further <laughs> i uh well i'll just say um just a few things that come to mind when i remember when i was a kid in the 70s i think there was a book written that was called primal scream or something 
And it was kind of an in thing. And I remember doing it a lot when I was in high school, just going in my car and screaming. And I, I got to do that more often. Uh, it reminded me, um, I, I'm kind of vocal and my wife doesn't like it too much when I, I'm like that. I have to warn her. But I have a son who has a genetic issue and sometimes he just gets so frustrated with it it happened yesterday and we let him scream around the house and uh, he didn't hurt anything or anybody but he just needed to do it i think i think we just we don't get com we're not comfortable with that as a society you know and um Kenneth, once i saw a play years ago uh, and it was about a mexican woman and when she was grieving she did that on stage she, she yelled she screamed like blood curdling scream yeah it just reminded me of that um yeah my my my, my family um was frightened and and it wasn't and i'm and my family i i love my family and it wasn't it was also they my aunt was in mental hospitals it's 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 just that this this country we are living in the the, the emotional <laughs> dark ages you know yeah. this this woman was trying to let it out and you know, put her in Costa, Ma you know, Costa Mesa, California. No, no, it was safer to lock her up. She was a, she was a trail. And I, the reason I say this is I sat with her in hospice. And after that woman died, I realized that she may have dropped the body, but she ain't gone. <laughs> I don't want to go into that. This is I'm going down too many <laughs> tangents. Who wants to pick up the ball and run with it? I am. Um... I'm, I'm really resonating with a, a lot with what you guys are saying. Um, I come from a family where uh, sh showing temper was not acceptable. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> where showing temper wasn't acceptable. We had one member of the family who was permitted to do that and do it greatly, but the rest of us were supposed to be, uh, you know, very quiet. And uh, it kind of resonated with me when you said something about, you know, that's how the United States is in general. We're not okay with certain emotions being expressed or really even talked about. And it made me think uh, of something that, you know, we're the child, so to speak, of the, of the British Isles. And the British Isles are even worse about that than we are. Uh, I lived there for a while. One cannot uh, show temper or even irritation or it's just very disruptive to everyone. And, and it's interesting because I was always the hothead in my family. <laughs> and uh, I was given a lot of labels because of that. You know, pretty little Mary was like, oh, and she, she'd freak out and, you know, don't set her off. And you know what? It's actually, I think it was some of the times that I got mad were the healthiest times. And, and I feel that many people who are maybe just a little more in living color than, than others are comfortable with, uh, we get labeled things. And everyone just wants us to uh, just just uh, kind of dull those colors down a little bit. And, and, and what a shame that is. You know, I, I love that my daughter is uh, living in full color. I, I, I applaud that. And I would uh, defend her against anyone because she's never hurt a single person, but she has her... She, yeah, she lives in full color. And, and I think it, it, it's just a really interesting testament that, you know, we're born here, God's children, we have all these amazing emotions and capabilities and, and that everyone wants us to dull down. That's a societal thing. It's got to, it's got to stop. <laughs> it's just got and, and perfect. It's stopping right here. This is, this is perfect, Mary. Oh, I'm so glad this, this, this Zoom call has been my favorite number 16 of all the, the other 15, because what you just said, um, if it did, did you were you weren't referring to Queen Elizabeth, were you? Queen Elizabeth, <laughs> God, God bless her. But 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 you know, um, we're we're here to to be loud. We're here to be colorful, you know. And and you know, if it frightens other people, that belongs to them. Because as if, if the, the the more we can become authentic, you know, they're the ones who need the pills if it bothers them. I'm sorry. Um, you know, we're. It's like Popeye eats spinach. It's all I can stand. I can't stand the more, you know, like <laughs> from the, 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 the 90s, you know, we finally, we couldn't stand it anymore. Stonewall, 1968, you know, for the drag queens started fighting back. We're here, we're queer, get used to it. You know, um, you know, I'm here, I'm colorful, I'm loving, I'm, I express every single color of the rainbow. Get used to it, folks, you know, and, 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 and we're not, you know, we're not letting them medicate us any longer. We, we medicated ourselves. We're not taking the, the, the drinking the, the, the Kool-Aid anymore. Um, and, 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 and when we're, when we're free to express, we're not going to need any more pills. 
I know it's a, I know it's a rough ride getting off these things, uh, and it's it's doable because everyone in this room, you know, has made that commitment. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yes, you know, I, I uh, my I half half my family. I won't say who or what is from uh, Versailles, France, and the other half are raging Italians. So um, <laughs> I have this weird thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> like the 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 French are very it's the especially like Parisians are very quiet like the British and if you ever raise your voice anything you say after that doesn't count um and then uh, the other half of my family is Italian and actually that was not good because there weren't enough limits on the rage and that wasn't good modeling uh no. so I have this like opposite uh, dichotomy going on um I don't. I just wanted to say that. I'm, I'm not sure what more. What more? It's just an interesting and sometimes difficult thing. But I do the best. I, I manage as best I can. And and also, Ray. You know, after and I, I've I've said this. I've 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 been very honest that you know after my last antidepressant and the spiritual work, because I come from one of these very uh, restricted British families. That's why. I could, that's why I was laughing at Mary because I come from a very very repressed family. You know, it in, in my story, it took it took ayahuasca, you know, several, several ceremonies to purge it out at, at the ontological level. Um, so, you know, my, my psychiatric parable, you know, I, I was you know, I had a pain body that, my, you know, goes back several generations. Uh, so I'm 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 doing this work with everyone. I hear it. Oh, that pain body thing that goes back generations. That is incredible. I went and visited my uh, my dad's town where his family is from, and I found out so much stuff, and I can understand where the pain comes from. They lived in the middle of nowhere, and in World War II, these towns were bombed to obliteration. Like, theirs didn't get bombed to obliteration, but all the villages around them were destroyed by German bombers in the mountains in the middle of nowhere. Um and they already were living in a very hard situation. And I was thinking, wow, I mean, what did they go through, these people? It must have been horrific. Um, you know, as you're, as you're sharing this, right, have you ever heard of a, a lecture uh, by the, uh, a, a man by the name of Gabor Mate? I have heard the name. Yeah, I don't remember why, though. That, that would, I'm going to put that down in the, the, the description okay. link. Uh, okay. He, you know, this is this is not all course in miracles, uh, but but I, I like the way this this call is going because he he was he grew up in uh, Nazi occupied Europe as an infant and and he absorbed his mother's fear. He absorbed his own mother's fear. It wasn't personal. None of this is personal. Uh, uh, and 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 you know, it was it was his responsibility to to alchemize it. You know, so your your relatives on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I just oh, when I when I when I realized that and I saw it and my, this light went on for me, it's like, wow, uh, explain so much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I did not have access to YouTube, you know, and none of us did. We're all about the same age, you know, maybe Greg's Mary a little bit younger. But, you know, um, in the 80s and 90s, there was no you there was no Internet. There was no YouTube. This they I had to, the pills the pills made it possible for me to reach age fifty four. Yeah, you know, I'm. It's at a time in history now, like no other. You know, this is no one's ever no one's ever done this before. All of us are doing. I'm not doing it. All of us are. Get off the pills and 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 you know get get through what others could not penetrate, and I called the sound barrier. Hmm. Yeah. And that's why I like, you know, connecting every Sunday because each person is documenting how they're doing theirs. You know, Kari, you're the first person to mention the, the, the rage room. Perfect. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, me living miracles go out in the forest, you know, throw rocks, you know, scream at trees and have someone hold the space. Um, you know, who was it? It was two people talked about screaming in their car. I've done all that. Cornfield. The cops were very nice, by the way. They were they were just so so compassionate. 
you know, I have, uh, for, for years I did martial arts uh, until about a year ago when I tore my ACL. I was doing, and it was so good for me. Although being older, I would easily get injured. So I had to be careful. But uh, I just told the, the guy who, who's my instructor, who's, he was a champion in Thailand for years. He's very wise. And I sent him a message and he goes, yes, you must come back. I know how much you need to hit things. That's what he said to me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like he, you know, he knows me so well before, and it's a, it blows my mind like how well he knows me and i haven't really told him anything personal you can just see how i am yeah. i'm perfect i'm glad you brought because my 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 stepbrother in new zealand he does mar we've not talked about it but i know he does martial arts i want that i want that documented too i want as many solutions to this documented as possible i, I i'm a runner i go out on the trail and i i run and i run and i run what whatever works this 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 zoom call by the way i got i've said it before this is my favorite of all the other 15 because this is where the work this is where my work this is what my work looks like my my mother this was the, what pained me about my own mother so much is, is 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 she died from cancer at age 63 a beautiful beautiful woman who was so into the the british narrative of you know of be the nice she had she played the the, uh, the 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 perfect you know the good woman role the good nice woman role and it, it tore me apart because i it actually got into the cancer and 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 should still be here today if 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 somebody had given her a rage room you know martial arts you know ayahuasca but i don't never mind we, i went down a tangent beethoven Beethoven kept me out of juvie in high school, I'm pretty sure. Because <laughs> I could beat on the piano for hours and work it all out. Oh, I thought you were talking about the movie with Tom Hanks and the St. Bernard. No. <laughs> <laughs> the real, the real <laughs> guy. <laughs> I want to hear more about that, Mary, because I'm not musical, but, but, and we don't have time this time, but I, I, I want, I want an entire, uh, I want to know more about Beethoven. I want to put as we many resources out there. You know, to, to give everyone a permission slip to, 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 to throw up these psychiatric parables and, and, and get on with our purposes and our, our purpose and our mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think music can be so, can affect your, your mind on a chemical level in ways that other things can't. Can I give a, uh, a uh, what is it called, a uh, requirement? Charles Bradley changes, speaking of music. Somebody watch that. I want to hear what y'all say. What's it called? Can you post uh, that to the group, by Charles, Charles Bradley. He redoes um, Black Sabbath cover changes. Greg, the the your this is this is perfect. I want synchronicities documented. Also, these are your synchronicities that you're sharing with us. I, I want and and Kari. Why we talked on the phone yesterday or we Facetime? Kari's getting feathers. Um, I don't. They, any any way the synchrony we've got to look for the trail of breadcrumbs greg yours is coming through black sabbath music you're listening again it goes back to what i said earlier the universe is conspiring for our emergence you know that's what einstein said you know the only decision a person has in this world are we living in a friendly universe or a hostile universe we've everyone here has made the decision on friendly and and we're you know we're getting the hell out of dodge <laughs> Hey, can I tell I you guys something? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was let's, gonna share Kristen, something. Wanna, yeah, and you're gonna be the last one, Kristen. I'm running out of I'm gonna run out of memory pretty soon. We're an okay. hour and twenty minutes. So oh, we'll shoot. Go Kirsten, we? and then oh, we I can came do in a like, wrap up. Okay, it's not even that exciting. Um, I took a little test this morning just to make sure I wasn't a narcissist because I'm really worried about who I am. I can't seem to figure it out. I've talked to this about with Greg about it. And actually said that I was an empath with warrior abilities. And that's who I used to think I was. So that helped me. I know that sounds weird. I needed to take a test, but I didn't have anybody else around to talk to me about it. So I was like. And that's all right. Yeah. Um, even, even if your dream character was a narcissist, remember, these, okay. are, these are all about the dream characters. Okay. This is not who you are. So if you discover that the dream character is a narcissist, it takes, okay. it, it takes the, the charge out okay. of out of this 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 you know this play and Ray's an actor. Maybe we should have a whole Zoom call on acting because because we are all acting and Ray is a professional actor. So mm -hmm. he he you know I'm sure I don't know anything about acting, but I'm sure you know you have to study a script before you go into a play. That's all we're doing here. But 
we, we want to turn these plays, you know, from from you know night from you know dark place to Winnie the Pooh. Okay. Well, some of us know our lines so well, we forget they're just lines. Wow. Good one. Good one. <laughs> I'm signing up for the acting class. <laughs> Kristen, yeah. can no. I say that I don't think a real I'm gonna let y'all go. Take a test. What did you? I'm sorry. I, I just occurred to me that I don't think any real narcissist would ever take a test because they'd be worried that they're a narcissist. <laughs> I know. I don't know why I do. I do that. I don't. Because I because of my rages. It concerns me. You know, I get, get like guess I'm like worried about how mean I am or whatever. You know, whatever. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I, I I could not be more thrilled with the direction that this took. Uh, they, they they just keep getting better and better. Uh, so. Does anybody want to want to you know do any closing? I mean, we're hour and twenty two minutes, and I, I don't want the I try to keep the Zoom calls you know under you know an hour and a half. So anybody feel you know guide to <coughs> close close us off with anything that they felt was was brought forward that was you know beneficial this Sunday? I just I, I just want to say it's so okay. great, like I, just the energy, just getting on this call every week now. To me, a, like hearing. In interesting and helpful things is great but like the energy i get from this group is just so awesome to me it's just an, this uplifting thing i, I that's all Sorry. i was just gonna say oh. the same it actually made me go outside and walk for a little bit and i never do that because i saw a couple people outside so that's a big deal for me believe it or not so i'm gonna give myself credit for it i went outside and walked around in a circle <laughs> thank okay, you so guys that yeah, that's perfect. No, it's I'm, called I'm inspiration. Gonna, uh, gonna, I felt inspired. Thank you. Yeah, good. I, I'm gonna. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna stop the recording, but I'm gonna keep. I keep the Zoom. I, I'm gonna keep the Zoom room open, but just for the YouTube archive. My name is Kenneth Price, and I've got the Dream Character Psychiatric Shaman. This has been almost an hour and a half Zoom call that we host every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel. I'm gonna leave a link to my. Uh, Facebook uh, profile below to reach out to to do on you know because I, I take these calls outreach and I you can tell from the the tone of the zoom call it's all about connection all of us um, you know we're immersed in a psychiatric parable you know psych meds benzodiazepines and everyone here has made the courageous decision to exit all of the pharmaceuticals and 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 I, I couldn't be more more thrilled with with what has you know what is coming out of uh i got i get to do an entire ministry so um if if this rings true for you reach out to me and i'll get you connected we have a, a weekly um uh we have a chat uh feature on facetime and uh so basically uh in a nutshell thanks for watching and uh kenneth bryce your psychiatric shaman and i look forward to uh, connecting with you soon okay God bless.